today I want to make a public statement, a public proclamation, uh, which is, I think, beneficial for the occult community as a whole. Majorian Cabal, which is the order led by Marcus McCarthy, is one of the few legitimate magical orders within this occult community. Majorian Cabal produces work with older deities in new refined fashion and I need to give a public praise to Majorian Cabal for essentially bringing in a sense the current of the Slavic god Chernobog to the western audiences in a way which is not fraudulent and doesn't engage in enormous amount of cultural appropriation. So, there is a lot of unfair criticism of Majorian Kabbal in the occult community, and as somebody who is pretty much in a daily contact with Majorian members, Hezekiah, Tomb of the Scarab, Robin Lucas, Somebody who interviewed Marcus with Joseph du I can safely say that the Cabal is full of legitimate magical practitioners willing to advance the craft and willing to advance the community. Now, regarding the Blighted as a group of gods, what I can safely say is that despite uh, not being officially a member of the Majorai, I work with two entities which are part of the Blighted. So I work with Chernobog and I work with the Spider Queen. Through the Spider Queen I got introduced via uh, material from VK. While uh, I essentially work with Chernobog as somebody who is from the Slavic background. And so I can safely say, without any doubt, that Blighted are real spirits, it's a real pantheon, and the guys from the Majorai are communicating with the entities which are real, and they have their own magical practices and rituals, which are having their own merit and are legitimate. And so after we got it out of the way, Essentially, I will discuss Slavic sorcery and why I will never teach Slavic sorcery to uh, people. Uh, why I made that firm decision and I will also explain why majority of the Haitians um, essentially don't teach white people uh, the true secret of Haitian voodoo. Now, I published a video interview with Tani Manora about her initiation in Haitian voodoo, and what was pretty clear uh, from interview is that voodoo guys pretty much uh, didn't teach Anima nor anybody who is white in, in that group of hers, uh, which she herself admitted they didn't teach them a lot. And she was really dissatisfied with the amount of closeness and secrecy Wudan possessed. Uh, I can assure you that the same amount of closeness and secrecy is something present within Balkan witchcraft community. Uh, I actually think that the Balkan witchcraft communities are much more secretive than the Wudan ones because uh, in Balkan witchcraft essentially not only you have to be uh, Serb or Valakian to learn it but you also have to be member of a certain family and you can only be taught by the members of your family or by somebody who lives in your village or your neighboring surroundings uh, you cannot simply go to the witch in the village and say hey I want to be taught uh, how to work with spirit so and so you need to have somebody who is from the bloodline who will be 
in contact with the current and who will teach you how to work with that and how to call them upon now this is something western people don't understand uh, this is something uh, which it's impossible to explain to the modern westerners but there is no just this thing there is also another concept uh, which is non understandable to the modern western sorcerer and that concept is the fact that there is no such a thing as living godhood or living gods in all traditions human living gods you know uh, sorcerers and witches are venerated by the people essentially but they are not venerated because they are uh, important they are venerated because they are vehicles for certain divine energies for certain spirits and so people venerate the spirit through uh, giving respect to the practitioner what is pretty well understood within Slavic and Wallachian witchcraft is that the witch can obtain certain powers only after boons to the spirits are performed. You cannot expect uh, to have certain abilities before you fulfill your obligations to the spirits. Servitude to the spirits comes before servitude to the self. In Balkan witchcraft and in many other forms of witchcraft, for example, tantric sorcery, you're gonna abolish the ego and you're gonna serve the spirits and you're gonna do what you are told. You are not allowed to ask questions to your spirit guides. When they tell you to do something after you opened your psychic abilities, it is understood that you have to do your devotional rituals. When I say devotional, I don't refer to the petty prayers and little bit of an offering. I refer to the physical actions and heavy ritual practices you have to do in order to, to earn the favor of the spirit in question. Uh, this is something which involves enormous amount of effort, enormous amount of hard work and enormous amount of devotion. So, after you engage in such practices, over time, you would receive rituals which will allow you to work on a higher level and manifest your desires. But manifestation of your desires comes after you did your devotion after you did your rituals after you have proven to the spirits that they can count on you and then they give you actual secrets but the modern western sorcery uh, is failing because they turn things on its head and uh, after we cleared this out what's wrong with the modern western practitioners I will explain why I will never teach majority of Westerners how to work with Slavic spirits. I taught only one guy how to work with Marana and that was because he needed help and he was terminally ill. So I needed to show him some stuff in order for the guy to be healthy again. But for a majority of people who ask me about Slavic sorcery, the answer is no. And I will say why the answer is no. So, for example, Majoran Kabal does good work and Marcus knows how to work with Chernobyl. Marcus is not uh, a guy who appropriates nonsense. He is really a real deal. And Cabal is a real deal. But not everybody is a Cabal. You see, 
majority of people when you give them powerful traditional witchcraft when you give them powerful methodologies what they really do is they don't follow the protocol they don't do what you tell them to do okay they essentially call the entity once or twice cut the rituals to the point they are unrecognizable and then they add a bunch of their own bullshit in it which usually doesn't work and then they present it as their own revolutionary methodology uh, they rebrand it they rebrand that nonsense and then they present it as their own uh, with complete disregard to a culture and with complete disregard to the question is the shit they are presenting working or not and i have seen it over and over again with different traditions being absolutely butchered by western magicians who don't know what they are talking about at all who have zero respect for the spirit who have zero respect for the culture who have zero respect for the efficacy of magic uh, so in order to avoid this to happen to slavic current i will never teach it to foreigners uh, there will be a few exceptions but uh, more or less uh, slavic sorcery will not be on youtube never slavic sorcery will not be the part of mentorship program and Slavic sorcery will not be taught to people who hate Slavs. Uh, I am pretty clear. Uh, because a lot of people, they want to learn Slavic and Wallachian sorcery, but uh, they want to genocide Russia and Ukraine. They want uh, to destroy all the Slavic countries and they consider us all to be barbarians. Uh, and savages and they have crazy stories in their heads about how Slavs want to destroy them or something uh, and uh, they claim to back it with evidence uh, and I have seen this happening uh, pretty severe during uh, when the Russia-Ukraine conflict started before Russia-Ukraine Russia conflict started uh, you know, it still existed, anti-Slavic hatred, but uh, not to this extent. You know, since Russia and Ukraine conflict started, essentially, uh, any Slavic country which is not with NATO is literally publicly lynched. If you support any of those Slavic countries who are not with NATO, you are publicly lynched. And also, if you support countries of Slavic nations who are with NATO, for example, uh, they pol politely try to explain to you that Slavs need to civilize themselves additionally because they are savages. Uh, and this is the narrative I have been hearing for years. Uh, this is just intensifying because of Russia and Ukraine conflict. And what you people from the Western world have to understand is not everyone thinks like you. Your value system is not the best in history and different peoples and nations have a complete right to think differently than you do. And also Western capitalism is not the best system in history and different nations and cultures have their own right to think differently than you do and have different ways of governing themselves. Now, what I see during this Russia and Ukraine conflict is one pretty perverse, uh, in a way, cultural shift and one pretty perverse cultural misunderstanding. 
which is propagated by the media. So essentially, uh, what they did in the media is they essentially uh, presented all of the values of traditional Slavic culture, Eastern Slavic culture, uh, such as, you know, Orthodox Christianity, a Slavic folk religion, Slavic customs. They presented all of that uh, due to the Russian invasion of Ukraine as some anti-civilizational uh, barbaric uh, bloodlust, right? And uh, they kind of created a narrative is, and that narrative is Ukraine is good because Ukraine is for the Western culture and Russia is bad because Russia wants to destroy democracy and Russia is whatever. And everybody who supports culture which is similar to Russian should be fucking genocided and destroyed. That is the fucking narrative and Ukraine is good. But Ukraine isn't good because Ukraine has its own cultural values. The reason why Ukraine is good according to the media is because Ukraine accepts Western culture. And if you have this narrative uh, in your head, if you hate Slavic culture and Slavic uh, tradition, don't expect from me to teach you Slavic shit, nor anybody else. Okay? Now, I have already publicly stated uh, in previous videos of mine of what I think about Slavic war, Slavic civil war between Ukrainians and Russians. I have already made my point and I am not pro-Russia nor pro-Ukraine. Pro I, I, I clearly said that what is going on is a war between Russian oligarchs and Ukrainian oligarchs. Uh, in a way, because there is a trade issue going on regarding gas and energy so thank you for watching and see you tomorrow uh, and uh, once again I ask my audience to not pay attention to the people who slander Majora and Cabal for no reason uh, because those people didn't produce anything worthy of attention themselves uh, talk to you soon